perfect. We're online. Welcome hey. um, to the Honor live stream number 27. Today with Marco Jovanovic from Berlin. Um, um, if you don't know about him, he's probably one of the most important figures in uh, harmonica education. Um, the founder of the Berlin Harmonica School. Um, you can't see the logo on the left-hand side of the screen right now <laughs> because it's cropped. Um, and he's an amazing player in many styles, both on diatonic and the chromatic. Um, so welcome, Marco. Thank you for your time. Thing. Hi, Konstantin. Thank you for being here for the invitation. I'm very excited. My first stream. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, we could talk in German too, but I think there were some at least some international people watching this. Um, I hope so. And so uh, please let us know in the chat where you are coming from. That would be exciting for us. And both of us are also reading the chat, so feel free to ask your questions. And we will give our best to, to help you. <laughs> 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 so how are things uh, going in Berlin right now? Um, you have a very professional setup, so you've done some online teaching, is that right? Um, yes, we are doing online teaching and, um, well, due to the situation of the last months and the, the recent developments, uh, we were forced to, to come up also with a, a possibility to continue and to develop our, our doings. and. Um, and so that we decided to develop this online studio. And right now I am in, in that uh, room and in, the, in that from that setup, I'm, I'm, you can see it, the picture. And yeah, we, we have tried to come up with a plan how to deal with all of that. And, um, and it's actually okay for now because uh, a lot of people can reach out now to us uh, through online um, connection and, and um, and we're focusing a lot of on, on, on our online work now and much more than before. And um, it's exciting actually to see how the world is a smaller place now in, a way, in some, some ways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so um, there, there are a lot of things that were planned, of course, um, which aren't happening yeah. this year. Um, we'll, we'll maybe also talk about that later because like, you're also organizing workshops, um, not only in Berlin, and you are planning a harmonica festival in Berlin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about uh, your relationship to the harmonica first. So from what I've read and heard and um, researched on the internet is basically that we started at a similar age. <laughs> so okay. um, you said that you started at the age of 13. 13. Yeah. Uh, and it was pretty, basically pretty your uncle who influenced you. Uh, yes, I mean my uncle was is is a major figure uh, and, and responsible for for that that I'm uh, playing harmonica and that I wanted to become a professional harmonica player. I saw him when I was a child um, playing playing every time. Uh, I saw him blues and um, improvising and huge man, long hair and very impressive, uh, per persona. <laughs> and, um, I was, he was, he was kind of like an idol for me when, when I was a kid, when I was a boy. And I, I was always fascinated, um, by his playing because he, or by that instrument, by this uh, expression of this instrument and by, um, how people reacted to the sound of the harmonica, how I reacted to this sound. So this, was one of my very early memories of, of um, my uncle and and what draw me draw me to the the instrument. And the second thing is that my parents um, or in our home where I grew up, um, blues in particular was one of the music styles which was uh, completely present almost every day. And definitely the blues harmonica uh, draw my uh, my attention to. I, I was I was um, I catch this uh, sound very early and. And like seeing my uncle playing it and, and listening to that music, uh, that was reason enough to, to ask him one day if he could show me how this thing works. And um, that's the short story. <laughs> so, so it's really like coming from both sides, like listening to the instrument and being 
fascinated by the sound of the instrument and then also Definitely. having that blues influence. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It, blues was not only the, the, the only style we listened, but uh, it was a major style, like very, very common in, in my parents' home. And um, we, I was also surrounded by a lot of different styles, like Indian music, Balkan music, classical music, all kinds of styles. And it was very na na natural for me to to be in that environment, surrounded by so many styles. And, and I think this is also the reason why after... I started playing and I started to develop some kind of musical personality that um, my interest was also to see how the harmonica can sound in different kinds of styles, how, how the harmonica is possible to express uh, and, and, and work in all that different styles. So kind of, it was natural for me. So I know that you not only play the harmonica, but you also play some bass and piano. Um, Was the harmonica your first instrument, or did you play the others before? No, the harmonica was really my first instrument. And, okay, that's um, interesting. Yeah, and uh, many years later, um, I started with the bass, with the upright bass straight. So I was not like many bass players come from the electric bass and then switch to the upright. Um, I um, it's a it's an interesting short story. When I when I moved to Berlin, I um, met the guys from the trio Lars Vegas and the Love Gloves, and and their bass player uh, was planning to quit the job there. And um, <laughs> we had a good time. We we met, and and it was pretty obvious that we fit good together uh, personally, musically, and they and we all agreed that it would be good to um, to continue our collaboration. But because the bass player was leaving and I was playing a harmonica, it's a different instrument, they asked me if I would be willing to uh, also learn the bass and uh, switch bass and harmonica due to this, the songs we play. And, uh, and I agreed and, um, and they gave me actually my first bass or they gave me a bass and they gave me the, the repertoire and told me like, okay, in 10 days we have a first tour so um <laughs> nice. good luck <laughs> and and it and it worked out actually I, i practiced for 10 days bass and then i had my first gig and a couple of gigs and um and it was the best way to um to learn the instrument by playing it on stage and um and i did that for a couple of years um uh, a lot actually piano uh, came much later uh, by trying to learn to study music, try to um, understand more about harmony and stuff. And I took a couple of piano lessons from a friend and started to teach myself. And, and, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not a good piano player, but I think it's, I understand some, some basics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the best thing you can do. Like, everybody can do because, like, it's not hard, like, pressing down keys. <laughs> Exactly. What a difference to for big, tone production, how much we to have to suffer yeah. to get a clean note. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's the biggest thing. Um, Absolutely. So uh, how was it like like getting to know so many styles of music that early on? Would you say that's like still a big influence today? For, for myself? Uh, yeah. If, definitely. I mean... Um, To be very honest, right now I'm I'm not thinking too much in terms of style. Um, of course, I respect styles and I respect uh, traditions. Uh, this is of course uh, necessary, but um, I'm more and more interested in 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 improvisation, in 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 the meeting or the. Uh, the the connection to to other musicians that me, it sounds a little esoteric I'm sorry but what I mean is like really creating music out of the moment uh, creating um, out of the atmosphere which is created by the musicians when they meet out of the room where we play so some kind all these styles I played and and some try to learn they they now are, con are connected in a in a melting pot and and I'm not too much thinking of of what I'm playing. Style-wise, I'm yeah. just trying to to be in 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 the music, and sometimes it works, and sometimes not, and I'm happy when it works. <laughs> so, it's um, maybe uh, the bottom line is I'm just trying not to think too much what I'm doing. I'm just trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's so important um, to be open for all these styles, and I mean that 
possibly helps like to just um ha having listened to all these uh, all the music like coming from just different places of the world um very absolutely. early on um absolutely yeah so you are a teacher right now um for the harmonica but did you ever had like a real harmonica teacher in your life besides your uncle um Yes, my uncle was, as you said, uh, like the the, the kickstart. He he gave me the the first major inspirations. Um, but later on, I always also met um, our good players, um, um, who gave me some some interesting inspirations for certain techniques or certain things I, I was interested to. So, you know, when when you go on these festivals, if you, when you part of that harmonica family you um, hear a lot of amazing players, a lot of talented people. And, and a lot of times just by hearing or being, being in a room with someone who's, who's just uh, a master of his instrument, you can um, um, get a lot, a lot of um, in influence and inspiration from, from just by hearing and, and understanding. But I, I never had a, a harmonica teacher Uh, who taught me for a long time uh, something. Yeah. I had other teachers. I had a guitar player, I had a piano player teacher, I had a, a, other instrumentalists uh, who taught me music. So okay. um, uh, I never studied music. I never went to to like a, a regular music school or something, but um, I had private teachers and a lot of books. I love books. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So... Um Of course, like festivals and events are like a big part of like connecting to other um, musicians with same interests or other harmonica players. What would you recommend like today where a lot of festivals or events aren't happening? Uh, like how can a beginner reach out? What's the best way to, to learn at this point? It's a it's a tough question because there are so many possibilities to do that, and yep. um, and we all learn a little different, and um, it really depends on like who you are and how you can and how you want to learn. I think I think that um, I would recommend definitely to find someone who um, who can um, guide you through certain steps in particular when you're beginners so for example like getting the the techniques right the intonation right getting um so that you can from that you reach a step from where you can practice yourself or learn yourself uh, if you find someone who can um guide you through these first steps then you're lucky and um And of course, there are so many uh, resources, online uh, videos and, and, and programs and stuff. And um, it's, it depends on your, how, you, how you can organize yourself. There are advantages and disadvantages to all of these uh, platforms and all of these uh, um, possibilities. My personal uh, suggestion and, and um, preference would be to, to, to learn with someone, to be guided by someone who has yeah. experience and who who's willing, who's willing to teach you actually. So if someone doesn't want to teach you anything, you will not, you will probably not learn anything. So uh, it's good to, f to have a good relationship to someone. Um, yeah, yeah. And also maybe just someone just guiding you. I mean, at least once, like just to get an overview of what, what's, uh, what's like the, the, the offer on the internet, because it's like endless and there's stuff that's right. like, very very good but there's also stuff right. that's probably not that good and recommendable yeah. so as a beginner to to get a feeling for like what's very really beneficial for you and what's probably not um yeah that's maybe also maybe, important maybe it's everything which is at some point interactive so when when you're not just receiving information and without getting any reaction or any feedback so If you can find someone or some program, if you can find a school or any, anything where you get a reaction from your teacher or from, from, the, from the people behind, uh, it's more advisable and more, it's better than one-way communications because I know it from myself that a couple of times I had students who already played for some years, but they only learned and, and learned from videos. Yeah. 
one-way teaching and um, and of course there was no one correcting them and and they learned um, the techniques somehow but not the right way and and so there's a lot of work to be <laughs> redone and built up again and stuff and so if you can find someone who can who can interactively guide you it's i think the best way to to, to yeah. go i mean that's actually something <laughs> that, that i can compare to something um so when i started out producing music like if you start out with like basically the wrong sounds that don't fit to each other then it gets hard to, right. to like finish the production in the end <laughs> absolutely so you got to get it right from the beginning on i mean that's the best case so absolutely yeah and it's like yeah and very hard to yeah. then like fix these things that you did <laughs> wrong in the beginning um compared to just starting out again from the beginning that could be absolutely. easier at, that, at some point actually absolutely i agree completely that's just and, um, the feeling i have with like Comparing the whole thing to music production. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there are a lot of people tuning in. There are somebody from Barcelona. Hey, even people from Hamburg. Kim, I can see Kim is there. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot from of friends. France and from Italy, from Canada. There's Iman um, from Toronto, who will actually be wow. a guest of... Uh, the live stream next month cool i mean i think later next month yeah so if you have any questions feel free to ask them um especially harmonica wise and i'm sure you want to hear us or marco play at some point during the stream <laughs> um, yeah. so my question would be um what is the first thing you teach to a beginner like somebody who really just picked up the instrument and comes to you what is the first thing i teach well probably how to hold it yeah uh because maybe most of you don't know but i'm one of the upside down players and uh when i play it looks like this and uh, i um play upside down and already looks confusing the, looking at the screen <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Already looks confusing looking at the screen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think uh, this is the first thing I, I'm, I'm teaching. So by uh, explaining how to hold it and to find for the person, for the student, the right way to do it. Because already there uh, lays a, a very, very huge mistake, which I'm seeing sometimes and um, which can create a lot of <laughs> um, stress later on. And it's... I'm always telling, so it doesn't matter if you hold it left or right, although 90% of the players hold it left-handed and yeah. and have the bass notes towards the hand inside here. That's, I guess, the regular playing. Um, but um, why, I, why I played it, why I'm, I started like this, because my uncle taught me like this, and he played it uh, upside down, but also uh, that I'm a right-handed, and I just grabbed the harmonica, with my right hand yeah but what's important is that the bass notes then are towards your hand so that you that's true uh can cup and that you have all these effects if the bass notes are outside you have a, a problem later on with microphone techniques with all the va va effects and stuff so this is the first thing i'm i'm, I'm showing and, and checking if somebody already plays if he has the right position which is towards the hand and not outside of the hand and um <laughs> that's the first thing yeah and you're not the only one there are other players playing upside down um i know so some famous one yeah uh, sonny terry paul butterfield i guess uh if i remember correctly i think lee sankey too right i'm not sure yeah i think so <laughs> so so <laughs> wh which are instruments are you playing uh for diatonic harmonicas uh i love the honer crossovers I play them almost exclusively and uh, for for some more bluesier uh, programs I prefer the um, the deluxe marine band deluxe okay yeah which is a wonderful instrument and uh, but most of the time I play the crossover instrument marine bands yeah yeah there was also a question by Matthias yeah we had the same question 
<laughs> I didn't even what kind of harmonicas do you play? Yeah, for chromatics, uh, I'm preferring the Suzuki ones. I think they are wonderful instruments. Nice. Never tried a Suzuki chromatic. You should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to play something on stream, just let us know. Sure. That would be great. I mean, I just, uh, we watched your little video um, that you did for Horner. Um, possibly, possibly these videos were recorded at the World Harmonica Festival in 2009. Yeah, some time weird? ago yeah. already. Yeah. yeah, and you played there with a like very special band setting. I don't know if that still exists or if that was a special thing because it included violin and accordion. Yeah. Um, the ensemble was called that ensemble was beautiful. Piacordia, Piacordia from, from Berlin. Uh, the, um, the main arranger and musical director was Gerhard Schiele. He's an accordion player who studied in Trussing and accordion and then later on moved to to Berlin and we met because uh, at that time I was thinking to start to play accordion and I had three lessons accordion from him and um, and after my third lesson um, I told him you know what I'm gonna stick to harmonica and uh, it's it's enough to to learn it but I loved accordion as an instrument and he asked me if I would be uh, interested in playing the solo part in that ensemble and I didn't knew it so he gave me the recordings and asked me if I would be interested in doing that and we played for five years and that was one of our last uh, concerts at the World Harmonica Festival 2009 and um, yeah it was a fantastic setup because it, it was violin, cello, upright bass and two reed instruments which is accordion and harmonica and yeah. sometimes uh, if you you could imagine that people avoid two similar sounding instruments but in my belief in my opinion it's it's a wonderful thing if you have similarities but slightly different uh timbres and and that can create in particular if the arrangements are made with nice harmonies and and the melody voice is backed through the accordion harmony that that can be very wonderful and um that's so true yeah yeah it's a beautiful sound and actually reminds me of um somebody who we both played with and I found a little like old recording of you and you Lamorski on your website. Oh yeah. Um, the oh, piece yeah. on the way to Japan. Yes. Oh, so if you're you, interested you, you, in, you were digging deep on the <laughs> website. That's <laughs> if you're interested in the sound hidden. of harmonica and accordion, you can check it out on Marco's website. Um, all oh, super. social media links and, um, his website are linked below in the description box cool almost forgot that i put that on the side super thank you yeah. for reminding me <laughs> <laughs> so the the two songs i really liked um from that set were blackbird which i also really like yeah. to play and yeah. the other one is that gold mewing song raider love raider love yeah you think like yeah. more you can play like a part of like one of both tunes here on stream or do you have something else in <laughs> mind that works better like solo harmonica wise I guess I would prefer right now some solo digital improvisation for the digital world right okay. now. Uh, yeah. Why? Because th these songs were part of the setup, the part of this of this ensemble, and they sound good and they make sense if I would have the accompaniment right now. Yeah. But what I could do, if you would like to hear it, is um, because you wrote it in the description that uh, the combination between Balkan music and blues music and exactly. that somehow maybe I found, there's even yeah. uh, a little melody or a scale you can teach us. That would be oh. great. Oh, all right. But we can uh, get to that later. No, 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 no problem. I'm, I'm a teacher. I can teach. I love, I love to teach. So <laughs> I'm... I feel motivated to do it, but uh, from uh, can I do just my favorite thing? And uh, of course, uh, how simple, how advanced can it be? Is there any restriction or <laughs> mm, maybe not including the overblows? So ah, I think right. that then we can okay. like still have like everything, everybody on our right. boat. <laughs> how about uh, G harmonica? Uh, G harmonica. Mine is a little 
bent here. I just see that so probably I was sitting on it. I'm sorry, harmonica. <laughs> um, there is a very nice scale. And the, the great thing is um, it's a mode. It's a mode of a harmonic minor scale. Uh, and if we play it in second position, it uh, you can switch very easily between blue sounding licks and stuff, and you can go to Balkan sounding uh, areas and, and, and musical, musical directions. So uh, the scale would go, I'm gonna first play it and then explain what it is. Two draw, three half, three whole step bending, three half step bending, four bending, four draw, five blow, five draw, and six blow. Yeah. And uh, because all of these notes are at some point in the second position, if you play some bluesy things. So all of these notes exist in these licks, but you can now change between and in particular if you go for example to an odd rhythm 7-8 or something, it becomes more Balkan sounding because these rhythms are um, more common in that yeah. musical <laughs> style and they change the melody immediately. So it's kind of familiar, it's familiar for blues players and, and second position players. And just by respecting that particular order of, uh, of, of, of that scale, it creates that sound. And if you're able to overblow, then even more possibilities are, uh, of course, um, um, possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that you threw in that five all over blow there. <laughs> and yeah. actually, I mean, this scale is, for a minor scale, it's like still very bright sounding. Yep. So it's basically a Dorian, the Dorian mode with a sharp 11. Mm -hmm. If you look from a jazz perspective, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you look at the like basic modes of the major scale, Dorian is already the, the brightest mode of the minor scales and if you look at the brightest option you have with major scales is the Lydian option with a sharp 11th and mm -hmm. now you have both in one scale <laughs> cool nice so are there are there pieces you you know that are, that are written using that scale um i I'm playing, I don't know if you saw that on the side, I'm playing with a wonderful trio with an oud player and a frame drum player from Croatia. Yeah. And uh, we, released, we released two albums and on both uh, on both albums I'm, I'm using that scale uh, in some of the songs. I don't know the names of the songs right now, but if you if you check out the, the albums, you will, you will find that scale in in practice, in, in, in use of, of that scale, so in use of it, of this repertoire. Um, it's a good, good, easy entrance into Balkan music or into Oriental sounding uh, music. It's, it can be good. Yeah, and it's a nice connection, like with the uh, ju just staying in second position. Because I always like, I think wh when I played that scale, most of the time, I did play it in twelfth position. All right. So with the two whole step band as a root note and. The, then you have the sharp 11 as a three-hole natural draw note. 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some questions coming in. So Uta is asking, "What's your favorite song?" <laughs> that, my that's a favorite very, song. Very oh general my God. question. It, it is impossible to answer because uh, there are millions, trillions of favorite songs I have, really, and um, and they change. So uh, I would be it would be very unfair. But to, you could tell um, us like what's your favorite song in your Spotify playlist right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me let me let me dig a little in my brain and see what uh, what I can come up with. Um, okay, c can you uh, should we narrow it down to some style? Because if we <laughs> mm, maybe maybe harmonica or is the, that that ah, right. would okay. be also that, a question from from me. Like, are you still listening to a lot of harmonica music? Good question. And uh, with answering that question, I can probably tell a good song or one of my favorite songs I have. And I already remember one. Um, I do not listen and I, I do not listen to a lot of harmonica music. Yeah. Um, and to be very honest, I did that when I started a lot, a lot, a lot. I was listening to everything I could find and I, and I was super curious to to hear all kinds of different harmonica players but at some point i think when i started playing a lot when i started um i don't know it's it's it felt that i needed to stop listening to harmonica to find my own voice yeah. maybe that's the best best explanation and um and the answer for for Ute's question is the first song of uh trio globos album of carnival of souls mm. I think it's one of the one of the second album of of Howard Levy and the Trio Globo, and there's one wonderful, wonderful piece. Uh, it's the first entry song of Carnival of Souls of that album. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I really loved it, and it influenced me a lot when I started playing. Yeah, these albums are amazing, and yeah. make sure to to get them somewhere because I think they they aren't available on like streaming platforms and stuff so you gotta go know. online and buy them <laughs> yeah if they are available i hope so i have my copies yeah which is 20 years old or something <laughs> there's okan what do you think overly expensive harmonica in turkey i don't quite understand that question i don't understand the question too okay Let's uh, move on to the next one. Does it refer to, to custom harps, maybe? Yeah, or maybe you can rephrase that. Or would you say that harmonicas in Turkey are more expensive than in other countries? Let us know. Um, <sighs> Matthias is asking, did you have difficulties with playing with playing with an accordion because they are tuned in 440 hertz? Um, they are sometimes higher tuned accordions very often are higher tuned um yeah. not 440 pianos or a lot of pianos but even pianos are not standardly tuned to 440 um but what this question is referring to and it's a it's a it's true that it's a challenge that you have to know with who you're playing and in what tuning he is playing so um yeah and because uh, for a couple of years i'm switching in 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 when i'm playing live i'm using diatonic and chromatic harmonicas and most of you probably know that even if you have a out of the box uh, diatonic it will be different tuned than a chromatic so there already the the problem starts so you have to to um, to uh, adapt to the tuning of the band or your your partner your musical partner and if you playing both instruments then you should should have some kind of a regular or equal tuned tuning between the harmonica uh, harmonicas you have or you play yeah otherwise uh, it can can get messy and um, so, so did you ever run into problems uh going on stage and having a piano or an accordion being tuned like too low or too high compared to your <laughs> harmonica <laughs> um a, a couple of situations different situations uh yeah. <laughs> starting from complete catastrophe <laughs> to the more common ones uh, where you just uh, close your eyes and you go through with, with a situation and try to of course. Uh, to do your best because you, you can't change the situation. So 
Um, but maybe the catastrophe is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I played once with a guitar player whose guitar, uh, like after or in the middle of the song, the, fo the tuning was falling completely. So oh, yeah. for a half step lower, while he was hitting the guitar, the strings, <laughs> uh, the 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 tuning fell like a half 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 step uh, lower. And I was not the only one. The whole band was suffering. <laughs> yeah. And you know this situation for yourself is not a problem because it can happen. The instruments, uh, the 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 screws get loose or whatever. But um, he was not hearing it. Uh, he was. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know, the position or whatever, he was focused or concentrated, but he was not hearing it. And so it was a little awkward to, we had to tell him, please, <laughs> tune after the songs. <laughs> it was very hard. Mm, okay, yeah. I mean, and, and as you said, like, there's some stuff that you can actually just fix by yourself. Because the thing is, like, if you're playing along to a piano that's maybe a little lower tuned than your harmonica, that's kind of manageable. Because like most yeah. of the notes, that, which are on the harmonica, you are able to play them a little lower than they are tuned yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem yeah. you run into problems uh, as soon as the other instruments are higher than your harmonica. <laughs> yep, that's then you can't the... do anything about it. <laughs> um, do you have a suggestion or a tip for? playing these melodies. I think Ulrike is referring to these melodies like using, making use of these modes of the harmonic minor scale. Uh, what kind of suggestion? Um, how to use them or how to... Yeah, I don't know. It's not clear the question, right? <laughs> but maybe I can uh, give a general inspiration for how to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna change to how about B flat harmonica oh yeah that would um, be great I think people in my B flat in my stream also they they love the B flat harmonica <laughs> oh it's a wonderful key it's a wonderful key and probably a lot of you guys out there know the major scale and um, it's something you learned or something you have in your pocket and um, I'd like to show maybe an example how to activate that scale which we all know and uh, we all consider it very easy and like kind of a basic scale and um, I'm gonna play a little and then explain what I did and how, how you can reach it let's see if I can do it oh something sticking here now it's open What I was trying, although a note was sticking up there, <laughs> what I was trying to show is that any scale, any thing can be used for making music, for yeah. playing, for creating music. And it's about listening, reacting, connecting to yourself and 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 reacting. It's it's 
and um, so it's not always about a particular technique, a particular scale, a particular harmonica, customized, whatever. It's really about learning to play music. And harmonica is an instrument and what we play is music. And um, music has um, some rules. It has a lot of space and freedom. And most of all, it's, it's a universal language. And we are just one little tiny uh, instrument in, in, in a family of, of hundreds of other instruments and we can learn from each other and um, so let's go <laughs> yeah that's so important like making music as early as possible like with any technique you are learning absolutely yeah um, absolutely so that can be as basic as if you like practicing how to articulate your notes just do that while playing along to a drum groove or something like yeah absolutely just uh don't get into that like practice practice mode where you're just doing like endless repetitions um without like yeah using your your mind i don't know <laughs> or emotion your your, yeah. your your emotion you know it's if you're not connected to what you're doing it most likely will not sound it will sound like practicing but it will not sound like music so um that's maybe an important <laughs> and tip. that's why people listening to you practice don't like listening to you practice. <laughs> yeah. That's um, true. Oh yeah, there mm. there was something I noticed while while you were playing that which is something that not too many players are talking about um because you were using basically your throat vibrato on the lower blow notes. Oh yeah. So how how would you, you um yeah, transfer that sound from the draw note. I mean, that's something that probably a lot of people can do um, to the blow notes. Um, there is a list. There is a there is a list of vibrato techniques, and they it includes the the throat vibrato. It in, includes, but also like jaw, tongue, diaphragm. Uh, lip vibrato. So there's a whole list of, of little, almost unnoticeable techniques which can create this this uh, wonderful sounding vibrato. And um, in my theory, how I understand it, like throat and diaphragm, they're coming from one breathing system, so they are connected. Yeah. And um, how I understand my blow vibrato, it's it's a lot. Uh, pushing from or or, or um, um, it's, a lot, it's a lot coming from the the diaphragm, including with here. Maybe I can play it again. It's actually yeah. not too active here, but it's from my diaphragm. <laughs> mm. And uh, with that, you can control all kinds of uh, blow note vibrato variations you want to yeah. do. And, and also slow down if you want. Which is a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so just yeah. a very, very beautiful, like also very, very beautiful, but also airy sound, um, which I really yeah. like on the lower tuned harmonica. Yeah. So um, what would you do if you're... Uh, if you want to like use a little more expression on the blow notes in the middle octave, um, will you still use the throat vibrato there or like the diaphragm vibrato, or would you switch to something else? Hmm. Uh, good question. Uh, let me just check if this note is still sticking. <laughs> okay. So on the blow notes, higher register. I would probably use something like this. Yeah. That's what I wanted you to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a combination of uh, jaw. But of course, the, the diaphragm would be also possible. Yeah. What else? Maybe how about tongue? Tongue is a heavy one because um, 
in theory the tongue would have to go like this or it can go in the back like this. So there are a couple of uh, options for tongue vibrato, but uh, it's not easy to control it and to make it sound nice. I'll try it my best, let's see. It sounds similar to the jaw, but it's the jaw is like this. Tongue. Advantage would be that you can really slow it down with tongue. You can really do almost like one. Yeah. And you can also blow bend right before it clips to the overblow, which is a nice, nice sound I like. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And then it clips to the overblow. You gotta overblow. be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> Some tricks. But yeah, that's a really important thought. Like you actually can change the pitch of these blow notes on holes one, Absolutely. two, six. Oh yeah, um, it's not impossible, and nope. that that's what enables you to to play play a vibrato on these holes. Yep. And as you said, like just gotta be careful. Like depending on how far you are going, um, that the overblow doesn't pop out. <laughs> yep. Matthias is asking, what's the trick to bend a note on a diatonic? That's a basic question. E -yo. Inhale, e -yo. That's, That's an easy question. Uh, answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope that helps, Matthias. Or call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Um, you've been teaching us some stuff and um, the whole thing with the harmonica school in Berlin started in 2016, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So probably you've been teaching before for a long time already. Oh. Um, I had my first teacher, I had my first student when I was 16. So yeah. I'm teaching for quite a long time. Uh, and sometimes I remember, I almost forgot that, but I had my first student when I was 16. I started with 13. Three years later, I had my first student in Munich. I lived, I used to live in Munich, and and I remember when I remember back then, I I'm really <laughs> surprised that I could fill an hour of teaching because I didn't know anything about music, then I didn't know anything about harmonica, but I tried to to I was. Um, I was really uh, into like uh, delivering some possible messages how to do it to the one student and yeah. and it was hard work in the beginning it was really I <laughs> I suffered of finding words pictures explanations to how how to how to learn the instrument so to your question I'm doing it for a long long time and um and I always did so I never stopped teaching it teaching and um uh, I was playing for 12 years almost um exclusively so I, I was traveling a lot and and playing with different bands and stuff and um and after some time i felt uh that i wanted to stay at some place somehow i i was a little tired of being every weekend somewhere and driving kilometers thousands of kilometers through germany and europe and stuff and so i remembered that i always was teaching and what i tried back then was um to organize a group class with groups of students yeah and that was the beginning. Uh, that was the beginning of of the school, actually. So it took from that first moment another four or five years until I realized that it's already a school, what I'm doing, and mm, that okay. I want to yeah. expand it. And 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 so 2016 was a uh, after. Uh, re so the school has already existed, but uh, it was the official. A late start of of something which already existed before, and um, mm. that's interesting. So it wasn't like, okay, I I don't want to travel too much anymore. No. Uh, I will found a harmonica school right now. It was just like a very natural progress to. Absolutely, I was doing it already. I had the classes, I had the students, I had uh, the interest in expanding that, and 
what developed and why I, I made it so officially, why I was announcing and, 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 and giving it a name and giving it uh, everything you can see now is that I realized how important um, it is for me to connect to others, to other harmonica players, our, our instructors, and how important it is for me to, to start working on the pedagogy, on, on the educational material. Um, because w while I was researching and seeing like what is on the market and, and um, I figured out that there is a lot of good things, but there's a lot not <laughs> existing. So there's a lot of things which uh, people don't talk about it or they don't have for one example, or one example for the diatonic harmonica is that, that um, almost everything is, is focusing on, on blues harmonica playing and blues harmonica is the, the sound for that instrument. That's like the major thing, but it's not always. There are so many things you can do. There are so many other great genres in music and, and I'm, and I'm just, I, I wanted to, so my initial wish was with a, with a school to inspire and to to create a platform where um, people can also learn the harmonica without being f uh, focused to, to to learn blues harmonica and um, to teach it as an instrument to teach it as any regular instrument and then later on you can choose where you want to go with it if you want to play a blues song you want to play a jazz a classical song uh, whatever. Yeah. And and that interest carried me towards this decision to to create a school and to make it official. Yeah, my thought about blues is always like, I mean, there's that American version of the blues, but that's not the only blues there is in the world. Like Balkan blues stuff sounds different. Yeah. Like you can talk about this, like yeah. just saying that that's the Balkan blues. <laughs> Or if you think about like Latin American music and a piece like yeah. Desafinado, that's the Latin American blues. <laughs> and for oh, like Amer I mean, America, yeah. it's like, yeah, maybe the four whole half step band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all, for me, uh, when you listen to work, all the music of the world, all the styles of the world, if you go to Greek music, if you go to uh, I don't know, African styles, which has hundreds of different of styles to Brazilian, to uh, Indian music, you will always find one, one equal thing, which is the, the, if you find honesty, if you find the energy of, of that, that it touches you, that it, so you, that it that it comes out of the heart somehow. Uh, for me, that's what I, found first in the blues but not only but i found it in so many other uh, styles as well and so i think for me it's if it's honest and if it comes from an honest part of of, of the person who's doing it then it touches me and 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 um and blues is for me an, a fantastic honest music so it, it it comes out of a certain tradition a certain history and um and so you can find that part of, of, of music in a lot of areas yeah. in the world. Ivan is asking, Ivan Jovanovic. <laughs> hey, Ivane, kakusi. <laughs> favorite What's your favorite for warming up? Yeah. Oh, oh, you're digging now into serious <laughs> I mean, the first uh, question is, a question from, from my side would be, are you warming up before concerts? Uh, before concerts, regularly not. I mean, yes, I am. I'm of course <laughs> sorry. Yes, I am. But but why I'm answering with no is because I'm associating warming up with uh, really really physically warming up. Playing um, and I'm not Pedrios on the harmonica. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not doing this. So yeah. um, I'm trying to get. My warming up is trying to get a connection to <laughs> the instrument and myself and to the situation. I will be in there soon, so you can call it warming up. And but it's it's it for before a concert, it will not be like a routine thing. I I'm uh, clicking on and I'm playing my routine uh, scales up and down and stuff. Um, it's 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 more 
if I feel nervous, I have somehow to face my 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 my, my emotions and somehow I have to get a feeling for myself and, and that's I'm trying to make it through my instrument and that means it's a very individual moment in the moment I am. That's yeah. my warming up. <laughs> but the question for from uh, Ivan um um yeah well for warming up so I mean in general I don't you know, I, I love arpeggio work and I love arpeggios, uh, arpeggio uh, practice. And um, I do them all, I do them all the time. So uh, at least I'm trying. So maybe that's the better answer. At least I'm trying to do them all the time because for me there the magic happens and, and, and you can so much learn, especially as a harmonica player, if you understand the, the musical idea behind what are arpeggios, how you can use them, um, what they can open up to you, technically speaking. So um, because you will step out of your regular movements you, you normally would do as a harmonica player and you learn really uh, the instrument um, and its musical potential. So arpeggios, if you can learn all kinds of them, 12 keys if you want to play uh, chromatically. If you don't want to play chromatically, uh, maybe that's also a good um, answer is just by playing, just by playing the regular uh, C major uh, triads or seventh chords, that is already like so beneficial, like <laughs> Sorry, I have to change because this one is really not working. Yeah. How about C harmonica? I guess everyone has a C harmonica. <laughs> or you go into the seventh. And the thing is, like, so how many harmonica players do that? <laughs> And that's just the C major. Uh, major seven, yeah. And uh, our students learn it and do it. So <laughs> by yeah. answering your questions, because <laughs> because I'm forcing them, learn arpeggios, learn arpeggios, or I'm showing them. And um, so even uh, go for the arpeggios and uh, just choose. Maybe that's also an additional answer. Just choose material you're already playing. So if you play, for example, in... Uh, in uh, a song in, in, in G minor, C harmonica speaking, check out the arpeggios which are in G minor. And yeah. um, related to the music, you're already playing the songs. Ask your guitar player, your piano player, like what are the chords of my song, of the song we are playing, of the next song. And um, obviously you have to prepare that at home. You can't do it if you've never done that before. You, it would be too hard to do it right away. But um, it's a it's a it's a good study of 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 music and your your instrument. Yeah. Um, there's another question by Ulrike. Um, I don't know how to translate it, but she's asking for online um, lesson material, basically. So that's like well, the, the biggest can... plug you can make right now. <laughs> Sorry, that's the biggest plug you can make, make right now. You can advertise everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, I mean, we have a school and we offer <laughs> uh, classes, single group classes, all kinds of classes online as well. So if you're interested, just contact the school and, and we will find a good way to come together. Um, maybe that's also interesting to um, to add is that um, I was focusing a lot in the last years of seeing my schoolwork in, in the physical way of like having a class, having a room, yeah. going on, 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 on vacation to Croatia, for example. That's the thing, because uh, like the renting harmonica boats school building is not only about like getting a single lesson, but it's no. a lot of group workshops and workshop specials. Yeah, and that, you have a lot of artists yeah. usually coming to Berlin yeah. and teaching. Yes, we, we, we have uh, wonderful collaborations with really one of the best players around and and we will expand this collaboration or work with ours. And um, 
right now it's a little delayed and a little uh, harder to do it, but we are out there and we will continue doing it. But what I want to say is it's, it's really what I, what I really like about the work with people and in groups in particular is the dynamics, the dynamics, the, the interactions, the, all, all these little things which happen when you hear someone in front of you, when you um, can, after you played an amazing song, just hug the person and, and tell him, man, this was so cool. Yeah. So I love, I really, I really like, and, and I'm glad, and we are, I guess we are all glad that we have this online possibilities right now in particular, but uh, our schoolwork also will be continued in, in, in a physical manner that um, it, it will be classes and workshops um, and just check it out if you're interested. Great, yeah. Hey, my uncle. Hello, Slavko. You are the one why I'm playing harmonica. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Slavko. Yeah, so um, we already had that question a few times. So to wrap this up, we, we should find something to... I mean, that's the hardest thing to do, like, in the online world, but, like, something we can to play together, play, play over or, like, I don't know. Trade courses. <laughs> how how does how is our our latency? Are we uh, so close that we could? F I, it seems to be good, so maybe we could try to to do something. Uh, oh, there, there would have to be a ballad. <laughs> but yeah, is there that's good? So long notes, no. Is there no, is there maybe like a theme that we both know of? I mean, of course, we could play some blues theme, but. Maybe we, there's yeah. also a theme we both know that isn't the blues. <laughs> um, how about something completely new? We uh, interact, which in a way nobody did it before. I don't know if it's true, but <laughs> through latency, through Hamburg, Berlin connection, wired connection, we can listen and react to each other uh, and create Playing something at the same time? out of it. I don't know. Maybe we can try it. Does that work with a out? lot of space, with a lot of throwing the notes uh, one to each other. Or maybe maybe back it can and work. Forth. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> choose your weapon. Which key? Oh, do do we have to choose? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love my B flat harmonica. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, mine mine was a little sticky. Maybe I I uh, let's see. Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay. Uh, without any direction, and we'll see where it where it leads us. How about this? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. 
<laughs> That actually felt also, quite good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But if someone out there is a, a network sound audio engineer, please develop for the world some good devices where musicians can play at the same time. So it's still <laughs> it's still not uh, developed, I think, as, as from our, now I, I, I know. So it, it works somehow. It's good. And we made it. But how imagine how cool that would be if like we had no zero zero latency and and stuff it would be super 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 it would be super stuff 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 Uh, it was a feedback uh, okay. created by the digital world <laughs> as a reaction for our playing. <laughs> That sounded quite quite uh, experimental, actually. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I think that I'm, I'm not sure about all these programs. Um, there was something we used at music school, um, but I already forgot the name. And at the same time, there's also a problem called program called sound oh i also forgot it but it's like more for your daw and i actually managed mm -hmm. to um jam in real time but only through midi um right with somebody i worked with um mm -hmm. and there's even like the possibility for somebody else and at some other place to record into your daw in real time somehow wow um but yeah i, I think pro tools has this option like uh wire wire online um cloud systems they have a pretty integrated um daw uh system now where like this online working works very good yeah yeah but i'm not sure about uh like regular instruments and like just playing through microphones and yeah 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 there there is I also don't. I don't know the the name, and uh, but there is one uh, hard, um, like a what's it called, um, like an external device, uh, s similar like a sound card, but it's connected via um, the the cable connection, and it it says that you can uh, get almost zero latency for musicians. It was developed for musicians, and but it's setting up. It's pretty. Uh, complicated so i did not check it out already yeah. but that would be that works that would be super <laughs> <laughs> so there there are a few questions left um tosi is asking didn't you practice secretly i don't know what what he's referring to what was the question <laughs> who practiced secretly who Did is you practicing practice secretly, secretly? <laughs> i'm not sure who he's referring to um billy helton uh, writes when someone plays how they feel That's what touches me the most. They have opened up their heart to you and you can feel it. You share in their life. Music is the rhythm of life. It connects us all. That's what Billy Helton writes. Absolutely. That's what I think too. And Tosi is asking if there are any other comparable harp schools in other cities in Germany. I would say no. We are, <laughs> no. We are the first one and for as far as I know the only one. Uh, I'm not saying that there are not our harmonica teachers. There are a lot of harmonica teachers, but um, the idea of our school is a little bigger and, and different. Yeah. 
And Tommy Harmonica is asking, have you heard of Ninjam? Oh, that's Hi, probably Tommy. that's probably a software, hey. right? Uh, we worked with Tommy together. He's a teacher here in Berlin, so I know okay. him. And uh, thank you for uh, watching us. Uh, Ninjam, no, I don't know that, but I will check it out. Uh, probably that's one of these devices. Maybe it's the one I was talking about. Um, I will check it out. Thank you. Nice. It's an open source platform created for playing together with without lag. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Very good. Okay. Yeah, it felt felt nice jamming with you. <laughs> there was like a, <laughs> an unusual jam. Like usually, um, I didn't didn't play like with other people at, at the same time on stream. <laughs> so that was nice. <laughs> um, T tell um, all the people watching, like, um, how can they check out your music and your harmonica school? I mean, I linked everything below, but um, what's like yeah. your your next musical project, and how can people check out that stuff? Well, stay tuned in 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 all of these channels you you put on the descriptions because we're planning. Uh, by January, if everything works well, to to come out with a couple of online programs from the school itself. Uh, and um, we are already working on it. So just stay tuned. And if you're interested, contact us. We can also send you already a little, already a little more details. And, and if you are interested in the schoolwork, you can easily join one of our classes online. That's what a lot of people already do. And um, and with musical from the musical side, um, I'm playing uh, a couple of concerts in the next week. So if you are in Berlin or around, uh, you would have the chance to 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 come and visit us on yeah. one of our concerts. And um, the next one is the 23rd of August. Uh, I'm playing with my colleague Lutz Schlosser. It's a wonderful improvised program, and we are playing in a huge church using the acoustics of the church uh, for our music. And um, so it's safe. It's a lot of space for everyone uh, without being not being afraid of. Um, and um, there are concerts. So there are concerts. Just contact me or ch or, or check out the, the Facebook sites and, and announcements. I was working mostly the last two years, not only on the school, I was working also on the festival, Yeah, which really uh, took a lot of... Uh, time and effort so uh, my musical active work or playing live was not my main focus in the last two or three years uh, it doesn't mean that i don't want to play or that i'm not that i uh, that i will not play but um it, it was my my goal to develop the festival and, and to kick start it and and uh we are now delayed that means it, it was supposed to be in september uh this september and uh, we were forced to cancel it to postpone it it will happen now in two years it's the 23rd of and 23rd um and the 25th until the 25th of september 2022 now and um uh, you were also one of the invited guests and uh, a lot of our great players and um yeah just check out the the festival site and the idea behind it yeah um yeah nice um oh Rohan is saying hello. Rohan, Hope you're doing well. Nice. Hey, good to see you. Hi. <laughs> so cool. Super nice. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, so yeah, check out the links in the description box below. Um, you can go to the website of the Harmonica School. You can go to Marco's website, um, where you can maybe also find your upcoming concert date. And yep. Fingers crossed that we can stay or play on stage um, regularly again very soon and yeah. have more um, harmonica events in person um, to connect again. Um, but yeah, this was a great opportunity to uh, do it like online. <laughs> thank you. So thank you for, for your time. For, yeah, no, I, I'm glad that I now had my first uh, streaming experience uh, done and, and guided by you and, and welcomed by you. Super nice. I like it. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, Color Red is uh, 
advertising my stream. <laughs> yeah, every day at 6 p.m. So if you if you speak German, if you speak German, yeah, or if you just want to learn to speak German. <laughs> 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 so um, thank you so much. Um, the next Hona live stream actually will be next week already. Um, on Thursday again at the same time, together with Federico Linari from Argentina. Um, hey, cool. Who is also a very young and very talented player. Absolutely. And I'm sure he can he can teach us and show us a lot. And it will be exciting to get in touch with Argentina. <laughs> Super. Cool. So thank you so much. Um, hope you have a great day or a great evening, wherever you are. Check out Marco, and we hope to see you very soon at a harmonica event. <laughs> Super. Thank you, Constantine, and hello and ciao to everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>